Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Metropolis Radio. Today, we are talking about this huge news that just came out, and that is the BBC has lost creative control over Doctor Who for season 14 and beyond. Uh, Russell T. Davies is returning to Doctor Who for season 14 and beyond, and a co-financing deal also means the BBC has lost creative control. Now, right out of the gate, I'm already going to speculate that many of you are going, thank fucking God. Especially out, especially after that, that uh, especially after the timeless child being how how divisive that shit was. I personally have not seen uh, season thirteen yet, so uh, I'm not going to give a, a, a definitive opinion on that one. So uh, let's just dig right into this. Um, the BBC has lost cre- has lost control of has lost control of creative control of Doctor Who from season fourteen onwards. You can just write the BBC has lost creative control. Done. That's easy. Okay, but uh, uh, en- enough of me critiquing it. Um, radical changes are in store for the BBC's flagship science fiction TV series. Current showrunner Chris Chibnall is departing after season 13 in next year's specials, along with 13th Doctor Jodie Whittaker. Chibnall will be replaced by returning showrunner Russell T. Davies, the man who relaunched Doctor Who so successfully back in 2005. Uh, Chibnall has consistently argued that the most important changes will happen behind the scenes. In his view, Doctor Who needs to reinvent itself in the age of Disney+, Plus, which we already did a video on. Uh, competing with the likes of Marvel and Lucasfilm, the only possible solution lay, lay in a co-production deal with, with a partner co-financing in return for certain benefits, such as some distribution rights or some element of creative say. A good example was The Night Manager, which reportedly, which reportedly cost £3 million per episode at a time when UK broadcaster budgets for primetime dramas rarely exceeded £700,000 to £800,000 pounds an hour. Uh, in the case of Doctor Who, the BBC has partnered with Bad Wolf, a production firm based in Wales, run by two former producers who worked with Davies on the 2005 relaunch. Uh, there have been reports Bad Wolf is soon to be acquired by Sony following a £60 million deal, which we also did a video on on this channel. Uh, according to the Times, not to be confused with the New York Times, there is a British publication just called The Times, uh, Bad Wolf is responsible for the creative direction and production, while the BBC retains international sales, merchandise, and other ancillary matters. Essentially, this means that from Doctor Who season 14 onwards, the BBC will no longer have creative control of Doctor Who. The Times reports this could mean the BBC will miss out on up to £40 million in commercial revenue for every 10 episodes. Uh, quote, it's extraordinary that BBC Studios has just rolled over, one source commented, and I do have a theory to that, but I'm gonna I'm gonna finish out this article before I come back to it. Um The Times' report seems overly critical, however. The BBC's finances are under significant strain, with the Conservative government continually placing pressure on their main source of income, the TV license fee. There is no way the BBC can produce Doctor Who to the quality level they hope for without signing some sort of co-production deal. What's more, international distribution and merchandise sales are vitally important in many science fiction franchises, so losing these would have would, would have been a critical blow to another BBC revenue stream, and all the figures involved with Bad Wolf are experienced producers who have worked on Doctor Who before, with the original Davies era aging surprisingly well. Even the Times' estimate of the cost is probably an overestimate because it fails to factor in the benefits of bringing back Russell T. Davies. The BBC would only agree to something like this if execs, if execs were confident Davies and Bad Wolf could dramatically increase Doctor Who's profile with significant increases in viewership and or franchising. Indeed, it's significant that back before he signed up to return to showrunner and before Bad Wolf was brought in, Davies reminisced about being, being, ahead, being ahead of the likes of Marvel and trying to build an entire universe around the show, with spin-offs, with spin-offs such as Torchwood and the Sarah Jane Adventures, Davies' vision for Doctor Who se- seems to involve it seems to involve it expanding into a bigger franchise than ever before. In which case, the BBC's t- the BBC's taking a step back and giving Davies the room to maneuver could pay could pay off for them in a big way with Doctor Who. Now let's go. Now let's go back to the. Now let's go back to this earlier quote. It's extraordinary that BBC Studios has just rolled over. Well. If you take a look at you know season twelve in particular, um, and the t- and the timeless child, uh, how many viewers have just simply tuned out as as a result? You know, um, I believe um, 
who was it that who was it that wrote that op-ed in uh, that that wrote the editorial in the Hollywood Reporter? I just I I know I just I I know I did a video. I think it was Hayden Schlossberg where like rule number twelve was don't expect that your audience is going to stick around, and you know bring bringing back Russell T Davies could probably in and of itself save the show. You know, given that you know, given that he was the guy that successfully brought it back. In fact, there was. In fact, there's an article older than this, but now is more relevant. And um, that article is basically Doctor Who needs Russell T Davies more than a new lead actor. The return of Russell T Davies as head writer slash executive producer will have a bigger impact on Doctor Who's success than who plays the next Doctor. Published on October 10th of 2021. Uh, ordinarily, Doctor Who fandom would be a buzz over who will be replacing Jodie Whittaker's 13th Doctor, who leaves after 2022. But the show recently announced the return of former showrunner Russell T. Davies, and with news as exciting as that, who plays the titular Time Lord takes a back seat. Davies, who led the show's revival back in 2005 with actors Christopher Eccleston and David Tennant as the 9th and 10th Doctors, respectively, brought Doctor Who to a whole new generation of fans and led the program to become immensely popular during his six-year tenure. His return in time for the 60th anniversary in 2023 couldn't be more welcome. Doctor Who's current head writer and executive producer Chris Chibnall will step down with Redeker after 2022. Chibnall is the third showrunner since the series reboot, taking over from Stephen Moffat in 2018. And I do believe that uh, Stephen Moffat did work with Russell T. Davies as well. Um, Doctor Who continued to ride high post Davies with Moffat and Matt Smith as the show's young and boisterous 11th Doctor. When Chibnall took over, the show was on the verge of a new era. Whitaker's Doctor Who was set to be the first female regeneration. When season 11 premiered, more viewers than ever tuned in to watch Whitaker as the 13th Doctor. Season 12, however, saw some of the lowest ratings of the series, which some attribute which some attributed to Whitaker's portrayal of the Doctor. But notice that line. Season 12, however, saw some of the lowest ratings of the series. So maybe to bring back uh, an element of good faith. You know, why not bring why not bring in, you know, why not bring back Russell T. Davies? I remember uh, I remember reading that uh, J. Michael Straczynski at one point. Um, I don't think he was tapped, but he did express interest in being the showrunner for uh, for Doctor Who. And I remember even thinking that, you know, you know, someone like a like a J. Michael Straczynski, an outsider coming in could be beneficial to the show. But I do think that Russell T. Uh, hindsight being 2020. I think Russell T. Davies is the better choice to come back, you know, but, but, you know, but the article continues correlation, however, is not causation. Whitaker's turn on the show coincided exactly with that of Chibnall as head writer and season 12 saw some of the weakest storytelling of that series with Davies at the helm. Again, the show has the chance to bring back the magic that made fans of the relaunch fall in love with it in the first place. Uh, Ch Chibnall's tenure as showrunner wasn't all bad. His first season dealt with some interesting historical moments, uh, such as Rosa, Rosa Parks' pivotal moment on a bus in Montgomery, Alabama. Uh, Whitaker, as the Doctor, brought enthusiasm and joy to the role, a nice balance after Capaldi's dark and pensive Doctor. The 13th Doctor's three new companions brought, brought some welcome diversity, but unfortunately Chibnall didn't bother to develop them in much detail. Some of the episodes fell flat, most weren't memorable. The finale of Doctor Who season 12 seemed to, uh, seemed to entirely upend show canon. Not a bad thing in and of itself, but jarring to some viewers. Again, you don't want to subvert expectations just to subvert expectations. That is a horrible, horrible excuse to subvert expectations. It's basically saying, well, we're going to we're going to change everything for the for, just for the sake of change. You know, why 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 are you why are you changing the show? Uh, because, be, uh, because we want to change it. You know, ne never, never a good excuse. Go, um, go ask uh, Lucasfilm how that worked out with uh, with the Star Wars sequel trilogy. Uh, Davies' first season wasn't full of winners either. One episode he wrote featured farting aliens, but he made viewers, but he made viewers care about his characters. Whether viewers loved Doctor Who's eventual bad wolf Rose, played by Billy Piper, or hated her, they cared about the show enough to keep watching. Uh, Davies was a good storyteller before he left Doctor Who and has only gotten better. In the years in between, his works have included the captivating limited series Years, uh, years and Years, an HBO-BBC collaboration starring Emma Thompson, uh, Emma Thompson uh, a very English scandal starring Hugh Grant, uh, Chibnall's, episode uh, Chibnall's episode premises for Doctor Who weren't bad per se, he pulled a lot from older Doctor Who lore, but they lacked cohesion. 
that single thread that pulls the viewers along episode to episode, that type of storytelling is exactly where Davies excels. While, of course, who plays the Doctor and how they portray the role matters and helps viewers to care, the truth remains there has not been a bad Doctor in the modern era, but there has been plenty of bad storytelling. As Doctor Who, Whitaker is a fantastic actor, and if she hadn't already decided to leave, it would have been interesting to see what Davies would have done with the 13th Doctor. Looking back at Davies' early seasons offers another reason to be excited about his return. Doctor Who began as a children's show, and while Whovians come in all ages, Davies seems to tap into that original spirit. He remembered to make the show fun. And that and and like I said, this, this is more just a a sign a sign of good faith and so and and guys you should not be shocked that the BBC has lost creative control because to be fair that's probably how they got Russell T Davies to agree to come back was that they were going to give him the keys to the kingdom you know otherwise why the hell is Russell T Davies going to waste his time because again he's got credit for bringing back Doctor Who and then obviously he's gone on to do other things i think he went on to do torchwood i think he i think he did the first couple of seasons if i'm if i'm not mistaken i don't think he did children of earth and miracle day i could be wrong about that but you know the bbc losing creative control over over doctor who um while some are saying thank fucking god i'm actually one i'm actually one of those people i think it really started going off the rails after the matt smith era um we're just going to have to wait and see how it plays out. You know, is, is this going to be good for Doctor Who long term? You know, that it, it's it's too early to make a definitive judgment call on that. And guys, that's pretty much all I've got for you. If you stuck around this long, thanks so much for doing so. And if you've been following me long enough, you know I'm terrible at ending these videos. So I will just see you guys on uh, next time.